Well, today I'd like to talk to you about something of great value to your art. Yes, the element of art known as value, or the light and dark ranges within a piece of art. Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to be really drawn to things like color and texture, because those are what really makes the impact on the art. But value is what's really key to how an object is seen by our eyes and how our brain processes it. For instance, this famous self-portrait by Rembrandt. Okay, if we view side by side with color and without color, you'll see that the grayscale version here has all of the light that forms the facial structure and gives it the depth that makes it more realistic. But side by side here with the color version, we see that all of the values in the structure are giving us the information and the color is just really added on top of that. Everything else is in place before the color is even there. Thinking about things like value, form, color, and texture, all while creating a piece of art is a bit of a challenge for me, for anybody, but really especially for beginners. So today we're going to concentrate on building a composition using values one step at a time. Now this fabric you may or may not be familiar with, but it's known as cheesecloth. And it's named that for its primary use, which was within the food industry. But it crosses over into the art realm sometimes as a great way to add texture and volume to paintings and sculpture. It's very lightweight and has a very wide open weave here. So it's a little like, when you layer it, it's a little bit like cross hatching in reverse. On a piece of black paper, we can create a variety of values, building purposefully from dark to light. Starting with just one layer, it starts to become a little more opaque and then building up. And at the same time, while we're layering it, we can take advantage of some of the great ways that it drapes and forms textures by fraying. And you can see how we can build it almost all the way to opaque. Now I have a pencil drawing of a seascape started right here. Very simple composition that I've created. Now I used a white charcoal pencil pastel to create the drawing at first. Now because of flowing nature of the fabric, a landscape is perfect. You can have waves and clouds and uh, rolling hills, and I sure wouldn't start with anything too defined and too detailed. All right, so I've cut a section of cheesecloth away from the bolt, and with a fabric this delicate, it's really easiest to cut when it's either folded or bunched. Now this will be the second darkest area, being the first layer. Now to apply it, I'm going to take a little glue stick. This is a Gorilla Kids glue stick. Add a little bit to the paper, then put the cheesecloth over the top of it like so. Now, rather than trying to cut a shape to fit into this area, which is really difficult to do with a fabric this delicate, what I do is just cut a swatch and then try to form it into the shape that I would like it to go. I think that it's easy to have a wooden tool or perhaps a craft stick to help me get it into the shape that I want it to be. I could create a hard edge by folding it. Let's just say I come down here to the horizon line and if I fold the piece up, then I have more of a straight line to create a hard edge. Now I can also create some very soft edges by taking advantage of the fraying. Let's just say I want to describe a bit of a wave splashing up against a rock down here at the edge of the cliff. I'm just going to fray the fabric a little bit, pull away some of those like so. And now let's glue this in place. You can almost see how that could create a splashing effect. It can also be rolled and bunched to build up layers quickly and opacity very quickly. Now you'll notice that rather than trying to go around that lighthouse that I've sketched out, I'm actually just taking the texture across it. Now I have a plan to add the lighthouse back in later. All right, let me set this aside for a minute and I'll show you a piece that I've worked on a little bit more and kind of built up to exactly where I want the layers to be. But you'll notice that a lot of these are still kind of free form and they could catch and be pulled off of there. So when you're finished, I would recommend coating it with a little bit of glue just to make sure that all your edges are sealed down and everything's gonna stay down nice and flat. So I've taken a little bit of a washable clear glue, added a little bit of water to it just so that I could brush it on. Now after everything has dried, it's time for the fun part. We're gonna add the color. The 
texture that we've created here is actually a great alternative ground for pastel. I do have a piece right here that I painted with watercolor. It's a little harder to work with because especially if you have the glue under there, if you use too much water, you can imagine it loosens up the glue again. A drier watercolor works great. So let's put some pastel on this, shall we? These are our Blick pastels, scholastic pastels. And I'm just gonna build up a little sky color here by running it on its side. You can also, of course, use the edges to get into the detail areas, almost like a sanded pastel surface. All right, I'm just gonna kind of finish up a nice, bright, intense sunset scene here. And then I'm going to put the lighthouse on. I have a silhouette of the lighthouse that I cut out from a a separate sheet of paper, and I'm just gonna go ahead, use my glue stick again, and glue that right onto the top piece. Get it straight, we don't want a leaning lighthouse. And then I could take my pastel and actually add some details to it as well. Some windows up here, perhaps. All right, well, pastel surfaces, of course, need to be fixed and cheesecloth is no different. In order to keep the pastel from transferring back onto fingers and onto clothes when they're touched, you really need to have a fixative. And today I wanted to show you one that I thought was a little bit different. This is Spectrafix Dega Fixative. It's all natural, made with casein milk proteins and grain alcohol. So it's non-toxic and it doesn't have a very strong odor. It can be used indoors, as I'm doing here, without the use of a spray booth. And it comes in a spray instead of an aerosol, which is friendlier for the environment as well as for the classroom. Well, I hope you found my demonstration today to be very valuable to your art and that you'll try creating a fiber landscape of your own. If you'd like to learn more about these materials and about the project itself, you can find a PDF at dickblick.com lesson plans.